Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to invite everyone who's still standing in the back to join us and pick a seat, if they can hear me. Hello, everyone. Perhaps not. So we'll just start with everyone um, sitting here this afternoon. Again, a warm welcome to Norskin East Africa House. Congratulations, you've landed to Africa's biggest hub for entrepreneurs. So clap for yourself. <laughs> Um, so why are we gathered here this afternoon? The theme, the topic, is women, mostly. Um, this is the month for us. And you know that usually around March, a lot is expressed to women. Many sentiments, right? Proverbs, poems, all kinds of things are said and done. So we thought, in the same vein, it's probably good to leverage this month and highlight some concrete work that has been done by women and really shine a light on the contribution that these stellar women have um, done, contributed to our society. I'll pose maybe a bit here so that people can get in and, and, and grab a seat. Welcome, welcome. All right. Okay, DJ. A little jazz. Well, I'll, I'll quickly um, just recap. Good afternoon for those who just joined. Um, like I was saying before, you've landed in uh, Africa's biggest hub for entrepreneurs. Um, that is not a lie. You can fact check us. <laughs> I hope. Um, and as I was saying, March is typically known as Women's Month. And a lot of sentiments are expressed. You know, they write poems, they um, invent songs for us, all kinds of things are said, right? Uh, which is good, we appreciate it. And um, most of the times, it's just left in words, right? We'll get to that later. But today, in the same vein, what we wanted to do is really highlight some of the phenomenal women in business and what they have done, um, and really shine a light on the contribution that they've had on our society. And you'll get to know more about them in a few minutes. Um, hmm, it's quite a good crowd. It's a bit of a balance, men and women. Love to see that. Welcome, men. We'll have a chat in a few. Um, so to get us started, to kick us off, we have Ambassador Johanna with us, um, the Ambassador of Sweden in Rwanda. I'd like to acknowledge her presence. And in a few, we'll uh, um, ask her to come and give her remarks. And then Lucy, oh, she's here. Lucy is uh, one of our partners as well. She is um, the head of strategy, digital innovation strategy. Am I saying that right? All right, I'll just give you a title. Um, from Novartis Foundation. And they're running um, quite a big hub here, health tech hub at Norsken, about 30 startups chosen from all over the world. Correct me if I'm wrong, Lucy. Um, and after Johanna, we'll get to hear from Lucy. She'll give, tell us a bit about what she does and um, you know, how powerful and boss lady she is. Um, and then quickly after that, we'll have a panel uh, made of the three phenomenal women that I talked about. And um, we'll quickly segue into a Q&A. Natalie, she's here, yeah, from Kepler. Uh, we'll have a Q&A with her and um, students from Kepler. So, right, I see everyone opening their eyes. Maybe that's not true, but we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, just wanted to give you a quick rundown of events. And without further ado, I'd like to invite Ambassador Johanna to um, quickly kick us off. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, it's such a great happiness to be here. Um, there are so many people I would like to say hi to, so I think I'm not gonna do it because then I'm gonna miss people out. Um, but it's especially, I mean, fabulous to have this panel of driven and successful entrepreneurs. But then also it's a joy because of the organizers, Norgen, Illumi, and BPN. They're all about doing good, but balancing the do good with um, the individual level and having success and entrepreneurship on, there, on that level. 
So it's a win-win based on solid values. And for me, I believe that this is a recipe for success. And I salute you for doing this and for really contribute to development. So I'm really happy to be here to speak about something that's a priority for my government and also an issue that's very close to my heart, which is gender equality and female entrepreneurship. Um, Sweden's commitment to gender equality and the economic empowerment of women, it goes way back. And a few years ago, Sweden was the first country in the world to launch a feminist foreign policy. The policy advances the idea that women, to be fully empowered, need access to rights, resources, and full representation. And as we celebrate the Month of Women, it's clear that we have come a very far way. The importance of gender equality and women's economic empowerment is increasingly recognized and embraced, both as a goal in itself, but also as a means for development. In this context, and being here and focusing on entrepreneurship, I'd like to focus on three things. First, it's the key role of women entrepreneurs in responding to the needs of girls and women. Women know their own reality best, and they find innovative solutions to their specific needs, that respond to their specific needs. Women lead change, and they are first movers. So we need to harness this knowledge and work together to ensure that women have access to finance, the support functions are provided, and that they have conditions to thrive and grow, to compete, and also to move from the informal sector to the formal sector. Something which is not totally related to business is of course the need to support women to juggle uh, work together with uh, family responsibilities. Second, when women thrive, societies thrive. Increasing women's participation in economic activities, it has a transformative impact on their lives, but also on their families and on communities. Evidence shows that households where women are economically active have an increased nutritional intake. They have incomes to cover school fees for their children and not least, improved economic resilience. Third and last, and this is where you come in, we need champions, we need role models, we need trendsetters. Girls around the country, they need to see what their opportunities are and what is possible. This is important across the board, and I think it's especially important when it comes to STEM and ICT. I attended an event a fortnight ago on girls and STEM. And as I spoke to one of the participants after the event, a young adolescent, I asked her, what's your takeaway? You know, and it, it was a really rich discussion, high level, super people. You know, I was moved to tears being there. And she says, you know, my takeaway is that I can do this. I'm gonna go home and tell my parents, I can do it. And it says something about the need to have role models. And here we have you, and it's a great opportunity, but it's also a great responsibility for you to do this. So to finish off, women entrepreneurship has a key role in shaping a vibrant private sector and in making the world a better place. Sweden is committed to support and empower women entrepreneurs in Rwanda. And it's with great pleasure that we have found uh, the corresponding interest and commitment with Norgen. So we see great potential to explore this together and create a partnership to support women entrepreneurship in Rwanda. And we really look forward to working together. So finally, before I sit down, I have a question to our panel. And for us to take forward our work, I'd really like to know what do you need from us? What do you need? What do your fellow other entrepreneurs need out there? to thrive and to really create this entrepreneurship in the country. So I'm here today, I'm here to listen, to learn from your experience, from your challenges and from your lessons learned. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Ambassador Johan. And, and I'm glad that you talk about trendsetters and champions because we have so many here tonight. And on the panel, we'll have three of them and we'll get to dive into the topics and their journeys. Um, next, I'd like to invite Lucy, who is the Director of Digital Transformation at the Novartis Foundation. All right. What did I say? You're in for a treat. Here you go. Thank you. So when we were discussing my participation tonight, it was pretty much impromptu, to be honest. Um, and I was so excited to talk about women because women have been absolutely fundamental within a lot of the work that we do within the Novartis Foundation. So for those of you who don't know what the Novartis Foundation is, we are a not-for-profit organization based out of Switzerland operating globally with a lot of help from women. We work on improving the health of low-income populations. And I'm just going to give you one example. COVID-19. Do you know what was the role in women during COVID-19? Can anyone from the audience give me an idea? Just one assumption that you might make. See, I'm a very bad uh, presenter because I, I like to play with the audience. Um, actually, 70% of health workers on the front lines were women. Women are not just mothers. They're not just workers. They're innovators. And they innovate in all the domains of their lives, in all domains of business. And they're also 50% of the founders in the Health Tech of Africa. Health Tech of Africa is probably one of the most exciting initiatives that we have been working together with our partners from Norsken. Um, if you haven't been there, I do invite you to go and, and actually see the physical space, but also meet some of the people who are making this come to life. Because what the Health Tech Hub Africa is, is not just a community, it is actually a way to find the best in class innovations fast-track them in public health systems in Africa and basically solve some of the biggest health challenges on the African continent, but maybe also serve as an inspiration for those innovations also in other countries that could actually have the same impact. What is so special about this is that when we were founding the Health Tech of Africa together with Norsken, we really wanted to focus on supporting local entrepreneurship. This is absolutely fundamental. When we were selecting our first cohort one year ago, and we were sitting together with some of you, and that's why you know what, what I'm going to say next, it was very important that we actually find gender equality into the representation of who is actually in the room, who is working on those solutions. And we see it in many ways, not only in to who we have actually g given some of the funding, to who is actually going through the capacity building programs, but also we see it through the opportunities to validate some of those successful innovations in public health systems. Now, none of the work that we will do would have been possible without the role of governments. And this is why Rwanda was the fundamental best practice example for us. This is why actually we started here, because the government of Rwanda, together with the Minister Paul and Minister Daniel, completely endorsed what we're doing with the Health Tech of Africa and actually is already working with some of our innovators to validate in the public health system of Rwanda some of these innovations. And once again, women come into the picture because they are nurses, they're physicians, they're community health workers, and they're part of the innovation process. Because everything that you do as an entrepreneur is think of the needs of the people you're trying to serve. And this is what we're here to do here as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lucy. We enjoy having you at Norskin and absolutely love the work that you do with the Health Tech Hub. Like she said, I echo what she said. I would invite you to actually, one of these days, come through and see the work that they do. It's phenomenal, really mind-blowing. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to kick off the panel as well. And I'd like to invite our panelists for tonight, starting with Nicole. Welcome. <laughs> and I'd like to invite Isolt. And last but certainly not least, Dominique Alonga.
and I will be the moderator of this panel. All right. I'll just be using the microphone. Okay, so let's, let's get this panel started. One moment. So, um, as I mentioned before, rather as Ambassador Johanna said before, we, have, we need to have a couple champions um, and trendsetters. And this panel here is just really a bunch of phenomenal champions and trendsetters in their own fields. Um, and they each have a unique story to tell. They each have a unique journey, which we will get into in a few. And I, really, and I truly believe that the best lessons are learned from other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do something, it's always good to hear it from, from someone who's done it before, learn from their lessons, from their challenges, um, and I believe that equips you with what you need um, to succeed. So, uh, my hope is that you leave here with maybe a new perspective um, that could be useful to your own journey, or that you leave inspired to go and start your own venture. Without further ado, I will not do any formal introductions and talk about the years of experiences and whatnot. I really want this to be a conversation, right? Just pretend no one is looking. <laughs> Tell me all the secrets. Um, and I want to start by asking you to present yourselves briefly and tell me about your background, your story. How did you start and why? Why did you choose to become an entrepreneur? And I'll start with Isolde. Oh. <laughs> I like suspense if you haven't. Um, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Isolde Shimge. Um, I am the co-founder and creative director at Uzuri KNY, which is an African-inspired, eco-friendly uh, shoe manufacturing brand uh, located here in Kigali since 2013. Um, that was a really beautiful question and it's really taken me back to nine years ago, ten years ago when I was um, a student in university and I met my business partner whom we engaged in deep conversations and we realized that there were two main issues in our community, um, one being the environmental crisis where we would um, see dumped um, tires in the community that could result into, um, you know, um, diseases for the people living around the area where they were dumped, but also um, unemployment problem. We were both studying um, creative design and we were not even sure that we were going to find jobs after university. So then uh, we started making shoes. Um, it was tough at the beginning, we just knew the theory part, and luckily we met um, a shoemaker who believed in our idea and he, we sat together um, in, a, in a very, very small space um, on one table and we started learning how to make shoes. Um, it wasn't until we, had to, we were close to graduating and we started now looking for people that we could train um, so that they make shoes and so that we slowly grow our team. Um, and slowly um, but surely today, nine years later, uh, we have a team of 20, uh, sorry, a team of 85 people in total, including shoemakers, operators, admin, um, marketing and all that, um, serving the market. Um, we have about uh, three shops here locally and we sell internationally. Uh, we also have trained through our training program. We so far have trained 1,078 people who are shoemakers today, um, and 10 of them have created their own businesses. Other shoemakers are distributed everywhere um, around Kigali making shoes. Uh, one thing that I'm really proud of today is that uh, this idea really started from nothing, where um, there was uh, a need for the, the the tires to really get out of those uh, out of the streets, and now uh, we have created a whole cycle of people making shoes, selling to the Rwandan market, each business with their own niche market that they're serving, um, and we have created a cycle of 
young people, especially women, who are really at the heart of our business, making shoes, making a living, and um, living their lives for the better. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, just <laughs> Quickly before I go on to someone else, can the people in the back hear us? Just give me a thumbs up if you can. Great. Just want to make sure you don't miss any of the nuggets here. Um, Nicole, yes. can you tell me um, a little bit about you and why you chose to be an entrepreneur? Which Isolt um, didn't answer, but we'll get back to that. Um, just want to hear why, really. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Nicole Bamukunde. So, yeah. Why did I decide to become an entrepreneur? I saw a, a gap in the education, um, I think in the education system, or more, no, in the hospitality industry. So I saw a gap in the quality of education. So we started to think, what can we do? I started by doing short trainings with uh, my team, and I saw that the issue was not uh, employees, but actually the education that they had received. So that's how the idea started to, why not bring the education that I was lucky to have here in Rwanda, to, on the continent, to Africa, so bring quality education. So this is how really the idea of opening the university, Vatel uh, Hotel and Tourism Business School, uh, started in my head. But when I thought about it, I, my plan was not to be, to open the school actually, it was to tell the school, can you please come to Rwanda here because I see an opportunity and I really like what you did with, uh, with me as a person. So I would like to offer the same opportunity to uh, Rwandan people and to East African and to African uh, people. So the school was like, yeah, but Africa, mm -hmm, no. But we have this franchise and if you want, we can start, we can help you and you can start the, the business. So that's how I became the entrepreneur. So here I am. I started in 2016 with the school and uh, we started with year one. Now we started with 15 students. Today we have 72 students. We had um, our first graduate in 2020. One of them is here. I think she's somewhere. Diane, she works with Ronda Events. So yes, and yeah. yeah oh, there she is. is. Over there, yeah. So we offer three uh, bachelor degrees in hotel and uh, tourism. We also have an application restaurant that we started called uh, Nura, which is a center of excellence. And we open it to um, TVAT students that do not have a chance to go to uh, uh, apply their skills in a high-end uh, environment. So they come, we teach them the, the foundation. Then it helps them to access uh, jobs. So the reason behind entrepreneurship was really solving a, a problem that I was seeing, quality of uh, education. Then the second thing was really to empower the youth because I believe the youth is the future and we need to really um, empower and uh, give them tools to enable them to become the change makers in the, in the, in the future. So that was the second uh, time. And the third thing is I really like to see when uh, the youth that we train now find uh, dignified jobs and uh, I see them um, coming to first year very shy not confident and then we pump them a little bit a lot of discipline and in year three here they are starting to look for jobs and being more confident and really thinking that yes as a uh, um, Swedish ambassador was saying like yeah I can do it you know they are like yeah I can go and change this uh, hospitality industry oh, that's, that's amazing story. thank you Nicole um, and, and maybe what you didn't pick up on there is there's two ventures in one. There's the school and there's the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I encourage you to Google Vatel, just, just to have an idea of what that is. And uh, maybe we'll go to Nura after this. Um, <laughs> next. Yes, yes, please do. Yes, please do. <laughs> Last but not least again, Dominique. Um, Dominique, I would love for you to tell us as well about mm -hmm. your story, what you do, and why you started it. I think yes. it's a really inspiring story, so. Thanks, thanks. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dominique Alonga, and uh, I would say I'm an accidental entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> you know, I did not have a brilliant idea that 
No, it's true. I didn't have, I think my journey into entrepreneurship was listening to the people that I was trying to serve and kind of trying to find sustainability. So in 2014, um, I came back to Rwanda and, you know, it, Zuri was, it, the whole country was just <laughs> mushrooming with awesomeness. There was Inzuki, Uzuri, House of Teo, and all these people who were just like, let's build Rwanda. All these young people who were just extremely inspiring to me. And I said, you know what, I got energy. I was 22. And I said, I want to, to also do something. Um, and the people that know me from the beginning of, of time, I've always been a nerd. I've loved storytelling. I did not see how that will connect to, to my career today, actually. Uh, all I wanted to do was, you know, to get kids to read. I wanted to connect reading with um, some incentives. You know, in the beginning was mutuel de santé or, you know, toothpaste or soap, you know, to kind of get kids and also eventually what we wanted is to get them scholarships. So we wanted to connect reading, the speed of them, their passion, their creativity to an incentive so we can get the parents to also get involved. Um, so with that, we had to build a software that would be installed in, in libraries. That did not happen, of course. Uh, they said, no, bye, thank you. Um, you know, get married and settle down. What are you trying to do? We'll get there, hey? We'll get there, right? Um, so, you know, I was like, okay, okay, okay. I still need to have something done, right? So I said, you know, why don't we actually build the libraries ourselves in schools and organizations and, and start from there? We'll have more control. You know, this is actually a good, a good pivot for, for our idea. So somehow I had volunteers that really believed in what I was doing. I'm very, very grateful for them. And um, we said, you know what, let's ask people to donate books. And we received a lot of um, Jehovah Witness magazines. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we said, okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's keep pivoting. So this is year one, right? Let's keep pivoting, let's keep thinking. And on the side, I was still talking to my boss, like, hey, I'm still on vacation. This is a, consider it a sabbatical, just in case I need to come back. At you know, 22. So, I mean, I wasn't sure where this was going. So then um, eventually we, we, we got a, you know, a huge donation of about 5,000 books that started off the 27 libraries that we ended up establishing in around Rwanda. Um, and we also had one in our own office where we welcomed about 80 children a day and we were about to turn into a daycare. And that's where Imagine We was born. Imagine We was, the kids kept telling us, we don't look like this. We don't look like this. We can't be heroes because we can't see ourselves. What is this white stuff? We've never seen this animal. We've never seen this. What if, you know, they didn't know what snow was. They didn't know what anything, you know, and they said, we, we can't. And listening to the kids, we said, you know what? Why don't we create a book that is so Rwandan that we will not hear this again? Mm. So that's how our first book was released. It was called O Rwandan Child. It ended up being in several, several um, refugee camps, schools, organizations. And the idea was they wanted to see themselves and kind of expand their own imagination. So that's how Imagine We actually started. It was born eight months after stumbling about. And, and that's why I wanted to, to share that story. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you are a good storyteller yourself, so it just makes sense <laughs> that you're in that Thank industry. Um, I have a testimony about that, actually. When I was growing up, we used to read books that had orange oranges. But as you know, in Rwanda, oranges are green. Yeah. Mm. So it didn't make sense, right? right. So right. thank you. Thank you. I think it's going to change a lot. High five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see one until I went uh, away. Um, so, Isolde, I want to come back to you. Um, this entrepreneurship journey is one that is glorified. And sometimes for, yeah, good reasons for it to be glorified. But it comes with, you know, challenges, I think. 
Um, sometimes I think you really feel like you're walking in the valley of the shadow, right? It's really dark in there. Um, have you experienced that? And I want <laughs> you to tell us a particular, give us a specific example of a tough moment and how you persevered through. Why I'm asking this is because I think when we talk about relevant and concrete examples, people learn from that. Um, and I want us to want you to walk us through a specific moment where you thought, this is it, no more Zuri shoes. <laughs> I'm sure you have a good one. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a good question. There's plenty, plenty of moments like those. Uh, <laughs> in the, they do happen a lot. I'm pretty sure the, the ladies can agree with me. <laughs> Uh, but I just um, I just want to specifically talk about a very recent um, event um, with the pandemic. Um, I also want to give a disclaimer that at least 97% of my raw materials is imported. There's really no factory here that makes threads or, or makes um, the leather, the canvas, anything that I use. So then with the pandemic, everything really went in shambles and you can, I, I cannot even tell you how much the logistics also went in shambles. And then uh, the suppliers that we work with um, becoming very difficult to pay them and for them to send in the materials. And um, really what we did was to sit down with the whole team and figure out ways to adapt. Um, what can we do? D does it mean that we have to create a new product for the market? How do we adapt to this situation? It was quite tough, really, really tough. A lot of um, sleepless nights, lots of thinking and, and frustrations and tears, to, to be honest. Um, but um, waking up and still walking on the streets, of course, after the lockdowns, um, and seeing people wearing wearing Uzuri shoes, people believing in the shoes. I remember when we started nine years ago, part of our mission, part of, of what we had to do, part of our responsibilities was to educate people to wear locally made products, to consume locally made products. And, and now, even still in the pandemic, people are embracing the shoes, they're taking pride in wearing them. Um, and and, and th they're still wearing them, not only because they're, they're fashionable, but also because they're functional for them and they need them. So that really inspired our team, the whole of us to adapt, to keep creating and to, you know, try mm -hmm. to navigate that and trying to get out of that. I can say that it was easy, it was really, really difficult, but um, with our people, with our customers who have really been our biggest um, source of learning throughout the years, uh, we managed to come back and, and serve them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. If there are any people in the house wearing Uzuri, raise your foot. I'm raise just your kidding. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, no raising feet. Um, back to you, Nicole. Oh, there's a discussion going on here. I think I sparked something there. Um, Nicole, I think she talked about a challenge, and I want you to talk about the good side, right? Um, is there any accomplishment that you are mostly proud of to date? Yeah, the students, when I see them oh. getting <laughs> yeah. jobs. Yes. 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 yes! Absolutely. And there's one in human form. Yes. Great. One tonight. All right, and um, maybe the other thing is there's a great restaurant that I love. Um, oh, me so too. So that's a good one. <laughs> Are there any Nura Rovers in the house? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Important to see, right? Yes, see but we need to work on our marketing. <laughs> <laughs> you always find something to... to, to <laughs> All right, Dominique, let me quickly pivot back to you. Um, here you are, a young woman trying to change have an impact on your society, change things at 22. And they're saying, well, perhaps you should look for a ring first. And that didn't pan out. So I'm assuming that with all those preconceived notions that they had about you, um, access to capital was probably something else, right? <laughs> and this is a critical mm -hmm. topic or a critical thing for a business to grow. What was your experience with access to capital? Oof, what is my experience? It's still an experience, right? right. It's still ongoing. Right. Yeah. Um, um, I, think, I think part of 
I think it would be twofold, right? One is, um, is, is a blame or something that I would say that I want to take responsibility for because even navigating entrepreneurship itself as a woman in society, you don't think you deserve it. You don't think you should go for it. You don't think you should knock on those doors. So it's also an inner growth itself of believing that, hey, if you knock at BK's door, they'll open. But for you to get there when all you've been trained to do is stay silent and listen to the elders, you know, I was, I was 20, so I, I didn't have, I didn't have mentorship at the time, you know, so that was the first fold. Um, I think a lot of women, um, even beyond actually um, meeting those partners, they don't, we don't feel like we actually deserve to take those, those first steps. You know, it, it's a lot of inner fights um, it, it, within ourselves. And, and the second thing is also society has, of course, done a, 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 a a, a job of telling people, women, um, especially young ones, must settle down, you know. And so I approached a few partners who, you know, to my face did tell me that, you know, hey, what if you get married? How can we know that you're in this for the long term and risk our money with you? And that is a real conversation I had to have. Um, and they, you know, uh, at the, in, in Kinyarwanda, they told me, you will follow the husband wherever he goes. So we can't necessarily trust you and partner with you. And, and that was among the first conversations I had. Um, and, and it sparked something in me of, you know, how do I become a bit more sustainable faster? Um, it definitely slows down our speed as women and as, as entrepreneurs, because if you could have, you know, gotten um, the loan or, you know, the grant or the, the, the investment, you have growth that would have sped up, that without, you're just, you know, pushing very slowly. Um, so I would say there's a bit of work for us to do in terms of breaking these biases, especially with uh, venture capitalists, um, with banks, um, you know, and, and just like having, I, I know there's lots of banks I've worked with that have a lot of great programs here in Rwanda. Man, shout out to Rwanda. Um, you know, honestly. <laughs> one time, one time um, for Rwanda, real quick. You know, quick. great, uh, you know, helping you with, um, with um, collaterals. You know, those things that are really hard to obtain, but then they say, you know what, we're going to, um, to, to kind of give you a bit of a leeway. So right now it's been helping, um, and it's, it's slowly going forward. So I'm, I'm a bit excited for the future. I'm glad to hear that there's, uh, the, the future is brighter. Um, there's something you talked about. You talked about mentorship. I just yes. want to follow up on that a little bit. What, um, what does mentorship look like for you and what role does it play in the success that you have today? Mentorship was huge, huge in the story of Imagine We. Um, from, the, from the, you know, you need to bounce back ideas. You know, my uh, launching a publishing house in Rwanda where, you know, they tell you, you know, people are walking around with a radio. We're a very oral culture. Um, you know, the partners, our partners, printing partners, they don't want to buy raw materials because they don't know if you'll come back, you know? Um, or when you come, so mentorship for me, what it looked like, it looked like in the beginning, you know, friends like Isolde who would just be like, oh my God, this happened, what about you, what about me? You know, those tears, I appreciate it. <laughs> and it also looks like going a little bit up to, you know, right now we're with BPN, which has been, you know, bouncing back. You're right. Yes, shout out to BPN. BPN, <laughs> shout out. Um, you know, I, we have a personal coach. I think BPN assigns personal coaches to different uh, ventures. And, you know, you sit down and you're like, this is what I'm thinking. And they're like, are you sure this is what you should be thinking? No, you know, <laughs> just as a sounding board. Um, but it also looks like uh, people you aspire to look like. Um, um, so, you know, you have mentors of afar who you, you know, you read their books, you, you, you meet them, you know, they tell you this is what to expect. Sometimes they give you their voice. They say, you know what, I'll make the call for you. So mentors are people who are already in the place you wish to be. And a simple call from them or a simple introduction, a simple email, again, takes you further than you would have um, if you went by yourself. Oh, thank you. That's, I think, deserves little, you know. <laughs>
A little commotion. Um, Nicole, I want to turn back to you again. And you, you, you told us about uh, the beginning of Vatel and how you reached out to the school. Looking back and where you are today, are there any resources or any tools that you think helped you to get to where you are today that you'd like to share with maybe a future entrepreneur in the house? Yeah, definitely. One of them starts with BPN. I'm not the best student, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but <laughs> Because I didn't follow the whole program. Mm? As an entrepreneur, sometimes you need to pick which, uh, you know, the, yeah, not the program, but the time. How are you going to manage your time? Because you can't do everything. So I used to, Alice was nice enough to let me pick the courses that I will, um, yeah, okay. I thought that will help me move faster. So BPN, like t t helping you to um, assist and to, um, like she was saying, to uh, coaching like administration uh, and uh, to understand also and try to push you uh, for the long term. That's uh, one of them. Uh, the second, second of them, I am lucky to be married to a lawyer. So you know when you start a business, very important. Get a, first thing, a lawyer to read all the contract and also to yeah. help you draft your contract. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is the support I got from the Vatel uh, in France. Right. So we really, helped with organizing because I, uh, I, I was always a student, I've never been a school director. So how do you set up a school? How do you, you know, uh, pick the, the lecturers? How do you uh, make sure that they follow the curriculum? So they helped me with, um, like giving me the blueprint, which was really helpful and helped me uh, uh, fast track. The fourth help that I got, I was lucky to have uh, access to capital through the MasterCard Foundation. So I, when we started our school, it was at the same time as uh, when MasterCard was looking, the foundation was looking at uh, where to invest in Rwanda, in which field, and luckily we decided to invest in uh, tourism and hospitality through Hanga Hazaza, the, the program. So we were among the first partners, and we, where I say I was lucky is because we trusted us. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even set up the school. So I had to have the Vatel school in France to vouch for me and say, yeah, yeah, it's true. She's going to open and right. yeah. And we really uh, trusted uh, the process and we were able to start and start by um, offering scholarship to underprivileged uh, students because we had many students that would come and say, we can't afford. And we're like, but you can't offer you. We can give you two scholarship, but you can't give 10. Mm -hmm. So MasterCard came in and said, okay, we're gonna, help you fund your program for the next five years. So I was really lucky with that. Perfect. Thanks for sharing. That's amazing to hear. Um, Isolde, you've been quiet there. <laughs> um, again, I want to do a little bit of retrospection here. Looking back on your journey, um, did the vision you start has the, let me rephrase. <laughs> the vision that you started with, is it still the same today? If yes. so, yes, Yes, Great. it is. Yeah. Perfect. So if so, how, what, are there any practical tools or any pract practical t tips that you have of how you've been able to execute on it and get to, wor to where you are today? I'm assuming there are some milestones you had for yourself every year. Mm -hmm. I want to do this this year. Yeah. Next year, how, what were those, are there any tips you can give us or um, things you can think back on and say, yep, I did this, this and that? Yeah. Awesome, awesome question. Um, so the vision that I started with, is it the same thing? Yes, it's still the same thing. And what is it you're gonna ask me? Um, it is to be an international brand uh, that uh, puts Rwanda on the map or rather even Africa on the map of footwear manufacturers. We don't have a, a lot of brands that, that are shoemakers. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> So we don't have uh, brands that are shoemakers or even right. fashion brands from Africa, let alone from Rwanda, that are in on an international standard. And this is what Uzuri is doing today. This is what we're working to do. And this vision, we, I, w I really want to really emphasize on how coaching is important. And for us to have had, to have looked that far, uh, Quite frankly, this and no, not because BP. We have a a, a, a pull up of BPN there. This is really because of BPN, 
and I'm a testimony. She is, she is, lots of people in this um, room are. Coaching, I want to emphasize how coaching, how important coaching is. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing to really having had the same vision for the past um, uh, um, nine years, but it's also another thing to be directed to thinking like that, to be um, helped to, to, to thinking yes. on that um, kind of level. And that's what BPN did for us. I really want to emphasize that one of the biggest tools really is coaching, whether it is by BPN or any other institution, there's plenty out here. Um, also want to emphasize on one of the biggest tool called Google, it's free. Internet <laughs> is the only thing that is expensive, but that you can spare. Lots of things, I'm always impressed by the things that I'm able to find yeah. on Google today, which yeah. wasn't there nine years ago. Um, and it's, it's constantly, you know, uh, giving us information about lots of things. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to us to utilize it and, uh, or, you know, not. Um, also want to talk about how it's important to knock on doors. I know how difficult it might be, but I did that uh, when I was young, when I was 22 years old, I still had the energy. I was knocking on all the doors. Um, I got doors slammed at me, yes. but I went back and yeah. I really kept yes. knocking. <laughs> so today it makes me happy to, you know, see like regulations, incentives uh, being, you know, um, provided by the government to the entrepreneurs in Rwanda because of the doors that we knocked on yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. And this needs to still be done. Um, I want to emphasize on really the, our business idea was born out of passion, but I want to talk about passion slash drive. It could be either of that. Wanting to, to knowing um, what you want to do um, and, and really being able to determine it at the very early stage also helps. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also through reading books and, and um, TED Talks. Today we have plenty of platforms that help us. Um, uh, and I think that's really being curious also, wanting yeah. to know right. uh, and wanting to, aspiring to learning every day. That those are, I think I talked about so many things, but yeah. those are the main tools that really help, um, helped us up to today. Okay, I, I was going to ask were there, um, at some point did you stop and say, you know, I like these skills and I would love to improve um, on, you know, certain professional course or earn a certificate. Were yes. there any certificates that you took or, just in terms of professional development for yourself as a leader, was there something that, you know, Yes, and this, struck? and this was found on Google. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find leadership classes that I can take. Mm -hmm. uh, today I'm, uh, I'm doing a, a transformational uh, leadership program with Stanford Seed something that I also stand uh, oh, upon. Hello. Yes. Um, so, and also, you know, trying to talk to people, how did you navigate this? What can you recommend me? Right. Um, and all yeah. of that really yeah. coming to finding how to better ourselves as leaders and how to um, constantly drive our companies and mm -hmm. our, the people that we, our teams to, um, to the better. Um, now, I know we're pressed on time a little bit, and here I'm trying to lock eyes with Pascal, but I think he's not around, so we're going to stretch it a little bit. Um, one more question that I want to ask to all the panelists before I end with Ambassador Johanna's question. I didn't forget. Um, and that question is really just about your own um, personally, right? I know you're undoubtedly busy, but how do you take care of yourself and maintain a good mental health balance with what you do as a, a business leader, <laughs> as a friend, as a spouse, Girl. or perhaps even mother? Um, how do you, how do you, yeah, how do you take care of yourself? It's important, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because without that, then there's no business, there's no usury, and then we're all barefoot. Right, so <laughs> we want to know how you take care of yourself so we can wear more uzuri. But I'll start with Nicole this time. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you take care of yourself? I think family, so luckily enough, and I guess he doesn't have a choice as well. 
I have a husband. Can you hear her? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Nope. So, luckily enough, I have a, a husband who is very supportive. So he helped me with the part of the business, finance, legal advice, uh, family as well is a big support, and um, friends like Alice, you know, you go, you talk to about your challenges, and you say, okay, I'm facing this. Oh, maybe you can do this way or this way. So really conversations, and uh, as his old was saying, Google. Google is the uh, yeah. That's how you take care of yourself. <laughs> He's the best friend. Yeah, I think, like, yes. I don't know how to do this. Let's Google. Okay. So I think, the, and personally, what also helped me is to read about other stories, like how he started the company and how he was struggling. Because you're like, how come I'm struggling so much? Why? Are you? What's wrong with me? But no, it's not. It's normal. So company like that have like over 50 years, 60 mm -hmm. years, and uh, company you can identify with, even though they are not in your sector. Uh, so. By head will be a uh, company at IKEA, for example, how they started, uh, and, but the idea remained the same, but slowly, slowly, they one step at a time. Right. So yes. you read about their story, you read about their challenges, then it's, it makes sense, and I think uh, us from the 21st century, we are lucky to have, yes, Google, but to learn from um, other, the, the Western world. Right. So we can read about what happened in there, Mm -hmm. go back far, you know, like 50 years ago, but still say, okay, if we went through this, this is my situation today, this is how I'm going to move. Maybe I can avoid some of the pitfalls. So if this is really have to see that you have a um, support that not necessarily a physical one. It's also read and uh, exercise, but I'm not very good at <laughs> <laughs> We'll just add it, just, you know, just in case and, it's... And, uh, eat. You know, okay. it's chocolate, yeah. It's also <laughs> it shouldn't be, yeah, because we shouldn't be like, ah, well, how come you're eating? I, I just need it, leave me. I just, yeah. 100% yes. agree. 100% yes. yes. agree. How do you been eating well? <laughs> um, yeah, lately, yes. Yeah. And I think there's something you talked about, um, friends. And I think for women, we can call it sisterhood. Yeah. It's a whole topic. We can get into it all day, right? Um, but very important. And Google, self-care, right? Right. Um, Isolde, just I'm, I'm looking at Pascal here, and I know he's just hinting at me that time is pressing. So just real quick and briefly, um, tell us in a few words, and then we'll go to uh, Dominique, and quickly wrap up with the question that Ambassador Johanna uh, asked. What do you need to thrive? Um, I just want to talk about two things. One is routine. Um, it's been very important for me to find a routine for myself. Um, and also having to stick to that discipline, meaning um, it hasn't always been like that, I will be lying to you, <laughs> but um, you know, setting the working hours and then the, the time to, to um, relax mm -hmm. and, and think about, um, we're so, I w I'm supposed to be thinking about other things, but I'm, I'm most of the time thinking about work, but it also helps me when I'm able to step out of the working space and think, um, I'm able to think clearly, and if I'm able to go to on, on, a, work, on a walk, it even helps, or, or on a run or something. Finding a routine has really helped me um, strive as an entrepreneur and also as a person, mm -hmm. um, as a friend as well, I believe. <laughs> also want to talk about a support system, um, finding yourself the people that you can relate to, um, that you can uh, cry together with, but also celebrate with. Uh, it's been, uh, and I think uh, Nicole also touched on that. Um, it's very important to sit down in a space where you talking the same language with the, with the yeah. people you're yeah. seated with, right. um, because that also helps. Um, yeah, those are the two Thank main you. things. Um, Dominique? Yeah, I would say uh, the only thing they haven't said is maybe like seek professional support as well, uh, be it a life coach, be it a, a therapist. Um, that, that really takes, um, takes a long way into taking care of who, who you are internally. Um, support system, you know, have somebody you can call and it's like, oh, those are tears, you sound like you're crying, and like, yeah, I'm crying, are you crying, you know. <laughs> um, she's right here. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, it's also allowing yourself to believe that 
what you're building is important, but if you kind of lose your mind, you won't be there when it's being built. So having that grace, I used to, you know, be the go, 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 um, these crazy books. Be careful what books you read as well. You know, there's these, uh, you know, leaders eat last and, and, and sleep last and, and oh my God, you know, like jump under the train for your team. I used to read those books in the beginning because I wanted to like good to great, good to great. Um, and then, you know, you come into a halt because you've been eating last, <laughs> literally. You've been, you know, sleeping last, getting to work early. And who's taking care of you, right? Um, so if you need one, that one, whoo. Yes. Yeah. So um, I've been slightly more shameless about taking that one day off. You know, it, it used to be a huge deal. The first maybe four years, I never had a vacation. I think he's always going to say the same. It's true. It is. Yeah, you did yes. not have a vacation. <laughs> yeah. So then I started, you know, like one day a week. You know, it's okay. It's okay to take that extra day. It's okay to take those 30 minutes if you need to go early or, you know, because you carry the vision wherever you go. And whatever you're exactly. doing, you're actually, no one will love your startup more than you. No one, you know? Um, so take care of yourself. Take care of that aspect yep. and, and therapy Thank works. You. It works. <laughs> I got a therapy. 100% agree. And there's one thing that no one mentioned. Okay. Netflix, no one? No? Okay. I thought that would be top of the list, but maybe it's just me. Um, so, quickly then, what do you need to thrive from Ambassador Johanna? Um, one? One thing. We'll cap it to one, right? Just yeah. one. All right, timer. Three, two, one, go. First person to go. Coaching, money, coaching, money, but coaching, <laughs> money, coaching. But yeah, finances are really important and yep. um, also mentorship is okay. really important, yeah. All right. Um, I want to add net networking, connections with other um, entrepreneurs. Okay, Nicole. Mentorship, but with um, uh, the people with the same in, uh, in the same industry. industry. Exactly. So to come and be like, a, not a mentor, more like um, Someone who can come and shadow you and help right. you mm. grow your company, you yeah. know? Yeah. Because you, well, I don't know about you, but you, most of the time you find yourself um, with fi small fires, like trying to but put up fires yeah, everywhere. But, <laughs> but actually, you need to look at the long term right. and look at the, uh, some fires, let them uh, burn. But yeah. it's, it's difficult to yes. let the fire burn. So yeah. someone shadowing you in your company in the same industry and uh, someone with experience, uh, I don't want to say old, but yeah, okay. retired, you know, that has time to yeah. look at the Absolutely. Uh, story. All right. Um, Ambassador Johanna, there goes <laughs> the answers. Um, and quickly before we wrap up, I just want to say thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. This thank was you. amazing. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I think a lot of things have been said, but if there are a few things that I picked up on, and I promise this is not a marketing ad for BPN, um, but you would also like to say something, absolutely. Um, I'll hand it over to you in a few minutes, but I was just going to mention um, coaching and mentoring kept coming up, right? Which means it's such a critical thing to have as, as an entrepreneur, especially as a woman. And I see uh, Alice, who would like to say something. Great. A few minutes, perhaps, to Alice, and then... We'll wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for this beautiful evening. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Do I have to? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and so uh, thank you very much for this beautiful evening. And especially thank you to our amazing panelists. I'm not saying amazing just to sound great. Um, I know all of them. I know how they, businesses, they started these businesses from scratch. And I think it's very important to mention uh, now as a closing remark that uh, Nicole's restaurant has been uh, listed among the 10 best restaurants in Africa. <laughs> as Isolde said, they are employing 85 young people, well-trained and... And 
it's not yet all. It's the first African uh, company that is going have, to have their product on Salando. Salando is a big distribution platform in Europe. <laughs> And Dominique, Dominique, <laughs> her books, um, I don't know if you know them, but they are among the best books here in Rwanda, uh, the best books in terms of quality, in terms of content, uh, in terms of uh, giveaways, in terms of, uh, and you find them in renowned uh, bookshops. And um, she's an amazing com uh, communicator. Absolutely. And by the way, my son's dreams is one day to write a book with Dominique. <laughs> Yes. So I think it's, I, I'm uh, really touched by also the humbleness of these entrepreneurs. It's one very important characteristic. No matter how successful you become, remain authentic and stay humble. And um, so that's something I wanted to add tonight. So thank you very, very much. Uh, we appreciate your hard work. I've seen you uh, working from scratch, falling down, standing up and um, and it, I don't want to take much time. I think it's very important that these young people who are here have the opportunity to talk to you and learn from you. So it's possible. It's possible here in Rwanda, and we are here, all of us. I would like to appreciate our partner from Norsken, uh, the Swedish Embassy, uh, our partner Ilum in terms of communication. Uh, really, the support is here. We are all here to build a beautiful Rwanda. Um, that many generations to come can uh, embrace and appreciate. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alice. Um, so, something that I, I would personally love to request from BPN is perhaps to add a course on boasting in uh, you know, the curriculum. Because without you, we really wouldn't have known that um, you know, she is going to be... Salango, is it? Part Salando, Part yes. Salango with all these things. Right? Ah. <laughs> well, well, uh, well, there should be a course on so we perhaps boasting a little bit there because exactly. this is just amazing. Um, and please join me again in thanking the ladies for their time. Like you heard, they do not rest, yet they're here with us tonight and, you know, share their journeys. So thank you, ladies. And here's to working on vacation policies maybe in the future. Um, and yes, we look yes. forward to having <laughs> you more often at Norskin. Have a wonderful evening. And I'm sure you'll have time to network and ask a few more questions. We would have loved to do that, but there's another event happening in a, in a few. So, and I've already taken up uh, much time. So, speak to you later in the cocktail. Stay tuned, stay, stay around, this is not it. Um, and thank you for your kind attention. I think it's really important to have good listeners as well. So. Off to the next event, right? Pascal, I'd like to hand it over back to you. Thank you, ladies. You can. Thank you. <laughs> A big, big round of applause to these brilliant ladies. And another big round of applause to our MC, Michelle. Really proud to have you in the team. Yeah. So um, after this uh, session, we are going to have a small break of, say, 10 to 15 minutes. And when we come back, we have students from Kepler uh, who will be interacting with uh, Nicholas. Nicholas uh, is uh, the founder of Norsken. So uh, it will be another inspiring session. So please don't leave yet. Okay. 10, 15 minutes max. Okay.